Yesterday, all I needed by my side was a woman with a good heart and a little piece of mine. I used to throw boulders in the canyon I was born. I fought my battles boldly, turned my back against the storm. Till the county judge decided that it was my time to die. It's funny thing about living is everybody says goodbye. That I'd be just like the rest That's the thing about living And I must say I'm quite impressed When I left home I couldn't wait to see the world The breeze blowing through her hands I spun that dancing girl but she must have spun too quickly From the man who said she spoke in for That he found out the hard way Never seen a man like me before Thank you. This is Jesse Hills Adams, and I'm Michael Hoover with Southern Oregon Songwriters Circle. Hey there, welcome to Southern Oregon Songwriters Circle. I'm Michael Hoover, and alongside me is Charles Douglas. Welcome. We have three musicians from the Rogue Valley tonight that we're so stoked to show you tonight, and let's get it started, Charles. Thank you, Hoover. Uh, first up tonight, uh, again, we're celebrating local songwriters, and we have one of our newest local songwriters, and that's uh, Joshua uh, Sturm, right? Yep, Josh, you got it. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you Third for having time. me. So Josh, uh, he uh, also goes by the name of Juniper Berries, isn't that correct? Yes, yeah, Juniper Berries. And, and I understand, Josh, you just released your very first EP. I did, at least as that project. Yeah, I, yeah, I was in a band before, and yeah, this new, tread in new water. What did you release it on? Uh, CD, band you camp. Do, I, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, totally. It was just cool. on, I did a band camp. And I kind of just threw it up there, like, whatever. It was kind of a side thing I was just doing for fun. Mm -hmm. And then people really liked it. And Scott Garrett, who I believe is on the last show, right? He was, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was excited about it, too. And he got me to play a show and stuff to promote it. That's cool. Has he promoted it at all on uh, KSKQ? Uh, yeah, he play, he's plays stuff kind of regularly. I mean, there's only four songs. There's only so many times you can yeah. <laughs> fit four songs into a radio show. But, right. yeah. yeah. So what's the name of your uh, new EP, man? It's called the Babyface EP. It's on Bandcamp. Um, if you look up the Juniper Berries Babyface EP, you'll find it. There's a big old cool collage on the cover. I think it's cool. cool. But um, yeah. And, and I saw your uh, CD release party. You had mm -hmm. it down there with a couple of other local musicians who yeah. were on the last show, Jesse yeah. and Scott. Jesse and Scott. Uh, yeah. Jesse, who you just saw, of course, in that uh, music video that started the show. Yeah, that was so cool. you released it down at Public House, and it seemed like you got a great reception. Yeah, it was it was really fun. We uh, That was my first time, well, second time 
but first time in public playing those songs out, which was great. Like pretty much only my friends had heard them at that point. So it was really great. I was really nervous and it was yeah. super cool that everyone came down and it's always nerve-wracking to throw that out there to yeah, the public. Totally. Like, the, your the friends first. aren't going to tell you you suck. Yeah, I know that. Like, <laughs> that's what I always say when, like, when I'm like, "Hey, I'm in a band." People are like, "Oh, cool." I'm like, "Wait, we might suck." Like, yeah, <laughs> listen yeah. to it first. But yeah, totally, it's great to have support. You know. Mm -hmm. and, and where do you know some of the songs like come from as far as your life experience? Well, a lot of them are kind of story-based. Like, particularly the first track is kind of about like a, I don't know, like some child looking back on like an abusive childhood or something which is not me at all like my yeah. parents are awesome and they were like a little worried that I <laughs> that they had abused me or something and that's why I wrote the song but they didn't it's all good it's always um, hard writing songs like that you yeah, know because you're, totally. like, you're like you want to yeah. you're like this is interesting yeah. like the characters in the song are really yeah. cool but I don't want people to misinterpret it right. and think that like I had this difficult you're gonna have to take it at surface value like, yeah, yeah exactly yeah but um so that's what that one's about and then the second two songs are just kind of like your standard love songs. Um, and then the last one is kind of about like, I don't know, like last year was my freshman year of college. And it was kind of about like trying to make that transition from just being like a little child almost to mm -hmm. trying to be in the real world and do all that good stuff. And, and I understand you're studying uh, emerging media. You're I am. I saw you. Emda, nice. you're interested. Nice plug. So you, <coughs> boom. And this is good experience too. Yeah. How would you say the two tie together, kind of your musical passions and, and what you want to do as a career? It's, well, I haven't given up that easily. I haven't <laughs> given up on a music career yet. But um, I, I kind of have found that a lot of people that do like video and like recording and stuff like that also do music. So it's like right. the two interests kind of like bind together mm -hmm. and help out. And like, I don't know, I've met people through school through doing things that are totally unmusic related that have helped me right. with music related stuff and vice versa. So do you think music like like the understanding of music helps in MDA for you? Oh yeah, for it's sure. The process. I mean just yeah. yeah, just going through a creative process, I kind of feel like once you've been through one and one like medium, you can kind of transfer it to another one. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Totally. And what are some of the kind of influences that kind of shaped your musical tastes and, and where that new EP came from? Um, well, the EP was a lot of, like, Elliot Smith. He's actually kind of the reason I started playing acoustic music. Like, I didn't really like acoustic guitar for a long time, but then I started listening to Elliot Smith, and it was all all downhill, as you say, from the, not downhill, but... <laughs> um, well, it was all downhill for Elliot Smith. Yeah, I, know, oh, I know he's one oh, of Jesse's favorites. Yeah. You no, know, Elliot Smith's great. He's, he's the best. But um, him and David Bowie, which I don't know if really that influence rears its head very much but mm -hmm. it's it's definitely there um those two mainly and then like the beatles and well, i would listen to your ep and uh one of the acoustic songs mm -hmm. the acoustic song on it yeah i thought it sounded kind of kinksy you know Ma was it the first did it have yeah. drums yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that one i could kind of see that yeah it kind of had that kinda. yeah it's so well i mean garage rock is like a big thing right. for me like especially uh, especially like early early garage rock yeah. kind of like before punk happened, like Kinks and mm -hmm. people like that. Well, so you kind of have like this strange element, you know, to your voice and doing oh, the thanks, lyrics. man. That it makes, like, like, I see Bowie. Like, I definitely yeah. see that inspiration. Yeah, yeah, I was successful. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> um, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Well, are you going to play a song for us? Yeah. What's the title? Uh, this one is called Magnetic North. It's really new. Like, I think maybe two people have heard it. Wow. They wrote it like two weeks ago. So it's not on EP. But, yeah, this oh, is called Magnetic here. North. Yeah. By the way, this is Josh's first time on television, folks, so give it up. Yeah, uh, forgive yeah. me. <laughs> no. um, okay, cool.
enough We're in a punk rock group Singing songs about blood and heartache Pacing back and forth Agony with digital minds Nobody around of the same kind Nobody around of the same kind Beautiful. Right. I love it, man. I like how you play with the dissonance and like the kind yeah, of bridge right. of that. It's like, well... That's what it's going for. That's what it's going for, man. And Being that's all, weird and all you can do. Oh, uh, yeah. Sweet. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for Appreciate having me. Appreciate it. On. You're great. Yeah, awesome. All right. So, while we're getting our uh, next musician on stage, again, you're watching Southern Oregon Songwriter Circle live here on RVTV Voices on January 8th, 2016. This is actually the very first show that we're having here out of the RVTV studio. And, and again, this is place for the community. It belongs to you. It belongs to all of us here in the Rogue Valley. And we really want you all to make use of it. If you're a songwriter or you know a songwriter who really wants to share their love, share their passion, share what, you know, they aspire to do, then, you know, go ahead and let them know. And uh, if you want to let us know, we're at facebook.com slash South Oregon. Again, that's Southern Oregon Songwriter Circle. Uh, up next, we're going to get, uh, well, Claire Burgess on stage. So Claire's going to mosey on up. Uh, again, uh, we're here uh, pretty much every month on Southern Oregon Songwriter Circle trying to share really what's best about our community. And uh, really a, a shining star right now coming on our stage, Claire Burgess. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, welcome. How's it going? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. We're glad to have you. Right. So Claire, uh, I've been uh, watching uh, your musical career for a while. You've got some great music videos out there. and. You've been here in this studio before. Uh, uh, tell us, what have you been working on lately? Um, I've kind of been playing less. I've played a lot of shows for a couple months and then didn't want to like burn everyone out. Right. So I haven't been playing very much lately, but my goal for this winter is to get a full album recorded. Sweet. So. Are you doing any fundraising for that, or are you going to just kind of do it? No, I'm hoping, really what I want to do is just buy myself like a decent digital recorder mm -hmm. and just do it on my own because yeah. I can't handle the pressure of yeah. the yeah, yeah. person getting frustrated that you're messing up because you're nervous right, and yeah. stuff. Not so. to mention it's expensive. Yeah, yeah, totally. You can have a friend do it, but you're not going to get the professional. So. Yeah. So something we're going to see but not hear uh, on screen just now uh, is a music video that uh, a talented local uh, videographer, uh, Jasmine Carson, made for you called uh, Detroit Misunderstanding. Nice. And uh, that's available if you go to rvtv.sou.edu. You click on that public access link and look up Claire Burgess, you'll, you'll find that video. Uh, tell us a little bit about kind of what was the inspiration uh, you know, behind that song and, and kind of how all that came together. That song actually was about um, me and a friend of mine getting into what I thought was a fight via text message and then finding out two days later after having written the song that he had mistyped words so it had come out like hope you don't have a good time or something like that and then <laughs> it just had auto corrected yeah wrong so i played yeah. the song for him and he thought it was pretty <laughs> funny how long did it stew before you figured out that it wasn't a fight i think like maybe 24 hours like 
upsetting night, woke up, just wrote the whole song in like one Enough shot. Enough time and to write then, the song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. And it looks like you shot that in like this big, empty, like movie theater kind of auditorium type. type yeah, theater. we shot it in the SOU theater. Over in Mies? Mm. Yeah. Right on. You can finally get a good use out of that building. Finally getting a good use out of that building, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Thank so you. Uh, you, you said you're working on an album, kind of what, what's some, some of the nuts and bolts going into that? Uh, what, what are you kind of getting your, your teeth sunk into? Well, <coughs> I pretty much just wanted to wait until I had like at least 12 or 13 songs. I wanted my first album to be like really solid. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm about there now, so. Any ideas on the title of the album? Um, I've had really weird random ideas. I think mm -hmm. for a while I decided to name it um, people are being so nice right now, or people are so nice somewhere, or something. <laughs> but I don't know if I'll go with that yeah. anymore. I don't like, really like long idea. titles. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you have a song uh, you'd like to share with us uh, yeah. tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Always less than half is the title. Thank you so much. Yeah. We've seen you before. I'm stoked. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Thank you. Again, that was Claire Burgess with her original track right here live on Southern Oregon Songwriter Circle on RVTV Voices. Mm -hmm.
All right, next up we're going to get Nick McNamara. Um, and I'd like to thank the guys from TAP, the Artisan Project, and Erica Franklin for helping me through this show and getting it all set up because we switched formats and I think we got it locked down. Yeah, <laughs> it's all coming together. Yeah. We've, we've just got a few minutes left on our live program, but we've got a, a second one, a kind of double header tonight coming right up. But first, coming right up on our stage is Nick McNamara. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, Nick, uh, you released your own full LP, your second uh, full album actually last year called The Bottomless Blue, isn't that correct? That's right. Yeah, second one, first uh, album on vinyl, so yeah. it's kind of a new learning experience for me. And that's Bottomless Blue Vinyl. That's a blue vinyl. Literally a blue vinyl. That's the most yeah. beautiful record I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. Well, Scott <laughs> did the same thing, Scott Garrett, and I was totally stoked. Yeah. yeah. That's the only way to do it now. Yeah, it's all about <laughs> the vinyl. If somebody's not going to buy a CD, you know, like, exactly. you get a vinyl and be like, of course, you want to buy it just for the, you know, the novelty, but also like the artwork's always great on them. And, yeah. yeah, it does seem like everyone wants a record to hold on to, otherwise they're just downloading the album. So, yeah, CDs <laughs> are becoming obsolete slowly, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> slowly but surely, physical media. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> but I understand you would like to play a song tonight, not off Bottomless Blue, but your third album you're already working on. You're going to release later this year. That's right. Uh, probably, uh, yeah, I'd say very later this year. <laughs> Just awesome. getting into it, but uh, yeah, it's going to be called Here Comes Nothing, and I just can't seem to sit still. I mean, as soon as I finished an album, I was just ready to get going again, so. Well, I know everybody's stoked to hear it, so let's go for it. All right. This one's called Leeches. Dig it. 
excited for Thank the new you. album. Thanks, Thanks so much, Nick. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Again, that was uh, Nick McNamara off his uh, forthcoming album, Here Comes Nothing. That was Leeches. Uh, Nick, unbelievable, man. We'll have to have you in the next show. Yeah, I'd love to. And, of course, if you're live right now, the next show is going to start in just over five minutes. We're live here from the RVTV studio, January 8th, 2016, the very first show of the new year, live from the studio, and our first show of the year here for Southern Oregon Songwriter Circle. A uh, pretty new series, but, uh, you know, out of the crib and dancing already. And we're boogieing down the line. A heck of an idea, Hoover, heck of an idea. Thank you, sir. So, uh, again, uh, we're, we're going to be welcoming more and more musicians as uh, time comes on. We're going to flash the credits on screen right now because we got to thank all the people who made this show possible. Uh, Michael Hoover, of course, this is really all his idea, but a lot of great volunteer crew members out there. Ron Huffstetter directing, Jesse Eels Adams on audio, Matt Foligno, Grant Chisholm, Rick Burns, David Wilson, and Alex Macedu all on cameras. Uh, again, the folks from TAP were instrumental in bringing all this together as well. And uh, Austin Halverson made our awesome graphics. So just so many people giving of their time, so many of these great musicians giving of their time to make Southern Oregon Songwriter Circle possible. Really want to thank them all. Thank RVTV for making sure this platform is available to you here in the Rogue Valley and the whole wide world. Uh, again, if you're watching live on January 8th, we're going to be right back in five minutes here on RVTV Voices. Thanks for tuning in. Stay classy, Southern Oregon. <laughs>